Hey friends, Tom Ogier here with a Figma tutorial. I was going through my backlog of YouTube tutorials, realized that a couple of my Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator tutorials were actually surprisingly popular. I thought, well, I'm not using Illustrator as much as I used to. I'm doing a lot more UX stuff in Figma, but there's some tricks. There's a lot of little tricks and tips. So I thought as I think of them, I'll start recording some little tutorials. And this one, I just wanted to look at how do we create a nice little arrow shape like that? Now, obviously we can grab our pen tool and we can painstakingly kind of draw uh, some kind of shape here. And we may get lucky, we may get it right there. Look at that, we're getting a little bit of alignment, but now, you know, how long does that line have to be? How long does that line have to be? We're <laughs> it's a little, little awkward, a little cursed. So, uh, you know, obviously we can fidget around with that. You'll get something that's not bad, but is it perfect? Is it precise? No, it's not. And we've got some great tools at our disposal to help us do that. So let's take a look. And one of the characteristics that I really want to get here is to be able to add a nice stroke to this thing. And it just goes all the way around the arrow and it treats that arrow like, uh, like one object. All right, so let's get started. Um, the arrow is made up of basically two identical shapes or two similar shapes using the same tool. We're gonna to create uh, two shapes with the rectangle tool. So we're grabbing the rectangle tool here and we'll just draw arbitrary shape here. We'll be able to resize this later, so I'm not too concerned. So that's our first one. The second one has to be a perfect square. So grabbing that rectangle tool again, and of course, if we wanted to, we could use the old hotkey R for that. Um, I'm gonna draw a, another box and this has to be a square. So we wanna hold it, the shift key down as we draw it. Now I could just simply do that and hope for the best, but um, what I can do as I'm creating that rectangle is if I hold down the option key, sorry, I'm recording this on a Mac, so on the Windows that would be an Alt key and the Shift key at the same time, then it's gonna draw it out from the center. And the reason I like that is it's just gonna help us size things a little bit better. Now I didn't start, uh, unlike Illustrator, um, Figma does not snap your starting position, so these still are misaligned, but that's not a big deal. It's just to help me, I wanna create a box that's at least the same size as the other one, if not, a little bit bigger. And then as I move my cursor close to the edge here, you see it turns into the rotate tool. I'm once again gonna hold the shift key down and I'm gonna rotate that until I get to that 45 degree rotation. I could have also done that over here and just typed 45 degrees up in this area and that'll have worked as well. Okay, now as we saw, it's they're not perfectly lined up yet, but you're starting to see that uh, there's some kind of an arrow-like shape going on here. And I, as I'm dragging, of course, Figma does a great job of snapping to the center, but if I want to do that another way, I can select both objects with the shift key. So I hold the shift key down and select both of those objects. And then I can use my alignment palette up at the top here and click the align vertical centers, which will snap them. Now, do be mindful that when you use align vertical centers and you have more than one object selected, they will align to each other, but that may result in the overall object moving vertically on the screen. That's not a problem in our case, but just something you need to be aware of. Whereas if I only had the single object selected or a group of objects and I hit the align, it will align to its outer container. So it's in this case, it's going to be frame one here. And so you'll see that that centers it right to the middle of frame one. So theoretically, if I grab this guy, since it's a square um, and I align like that, that'll also have the same effect. And now it's aligned to the center. Completely unnecessary for this example, but something I thought I'd share quickly. All right, now this obviously does not look like an arrowhead, at least not the kind that I'm trying to create. So the easiest way to do that is to simply uh, double click on the, uh, on the object, which turns you into the vector edit mode where I can you know, grab my points and I can start to move them around. In fact, if I wanted to create you know, a convex arrow or a concave arrow, I could do stuff like this and start to have some fun with that. But that's not my point here. I don't even need this point, to be honest. I wanna get rid of it altogether. So, the way you do that is you go and grab your vector edit tool, the pen tool, and as you move over the point that you want to delete, just hold down the option or alt key on the PC, and you see that there's a little minus sign that appears on the icon to let you know that if you click on here, you're actually gonna be deleting a point. Um, for the longest time I thought, oh, well, I could just select that point here and hit the delete key, but that just deletes the whole darn thing. So that's not the technique. The technique is grab the arrow, hold down the option or alt key, and then you've got that. Okay, so, and the funny thing is Figma still kind of remembers as, hey, this one once was a box, but that doesn't really impact the visuals of this. So we're getting really close to our arrow now. 
Um, and if all you want is a solid arrow like this, well, you can pretty much stop or maybe you'll group these guys together and you're pretty much done. But uh, my goal was to be able to have this arrow with an outline around it using the stroke. Let's just turn that up a little bit so we can really see it. And clearly now you see that it is composed of two objects. And even if we overlap them, uh, here I'm holding down the uh, shift key while I use my arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge by larger increments, otherwise it's really slow. So I get into the habit of using the shift key a lot when I'm nudging in Figma and most other applications as well. Well, we can still see that that line kind of continues down. So how do we unify these two shapes into a single shape? So that is, I select both of those guys and up here, at least in this version, so I'm recording in 2023 and this is where they have it right now. It may move in the future time, but there's these Boolean groups the Boolean groups are brilliant. So we can, there's a number of different options here, but you'll start to see what they do when I hit the union. So union takes the two groups and combines them in such a way that they are treated as a single object for the purposes of a stroke. And so it's better than grouping. Grouping also combines the objects, but leaves them as individual objects. And you can, then they have their own strokes and their own settings. Here, it's now treated as a single object that can have its own fill. So if I click on that and I change the fill or even remove the fill altogether, let's throw something behind here. There we go. You can see that, yeah, it's still being treated as a single object. If I add the fill back, maybe I can change the opacity of that fill. All of that stuff works exactly as you'd expect it to work. So that's really great. So now we've got ourselves a, an arrow that we can apply to our designs. Uh, we might want to scale it. Um, now, here's an important point. We don't want to just grab a corner handle and start willy-nilly scaling it because uh, unless this is the effect you're looking for, we're scaling the arrowhead at the same time that we're scaling the tail of the arrow. So we don't want to do that, pressing undo here. Um, we can scale the whole thing with the shift key held down if we do want a smaller arrow. That's perfectly fine to do that. And in Figma, Figma does not scale your stroke as you're scaling uh, an object. So the stroke now looks disproportionately thick compared to the way it was before. And that's kind of normal. That's just how that works in, in Figma. And I'm not aware of a, of a function that allows you to scale the stroke the way you could in Illustrator. You just say scale strokes and effects as you're, as you're scaling an object. All right. So um, how would we, you know, let's say we want an extra long arrow here. We know that if we grab this side here like that and yank it, well, that's going to just, again, that's going to distort the head of the arrow. Well, here's the beautiful thing about the union. I've opened it up here. You can see that that's opened up. Uh, maybe we'll rename this to arrow. It has preserved the original shapes and it will continue to just union them programmatically as long as I want. If I were to separate them, then of course the union doesn't really hold, but I could even move them around and you can see that union's happening in real time. So it's very cool. And in fact, um, there's, there's some great illustrations that can be created just by simple shapes uh, and the union tool to create really interesting illustrations and icons and things like that. So that's uh, something for your creative juices. But I'm going to set that back. But also, since I've got the individual shapes, I could just grab, remember it, I've got to make sure I've got that object selected. I can just grab that, make it short and stumpy without changing the arrowhead. Um, or I can pull it out here. Now I use a quick little shortcut trick here. Notice I've, I've got the arrow here. If I click on it, obviously I'm selecting the entire object. But if I hold down the command key, which on the Windows becomes the control key, I can actually individually select an item. This, this is the, uh, I forget what the exact term is, select inside or select into. Uh, but it allows you to go within the frame and select the innermost object that you clicked on. Super, super useful. And then if you did want to select the innermost object, but you're actually trying to select the the larger structure, in this case the arrow, I can press shift enter and that backs me out and selects the larger item. So that's super, super useful. So again, command on the Mac, control on the PC will take you right in to the item that's directly underneath your mouse at the most granular level. It won't go into nested frames, I don't believe. I think it'll stick within a single frame, but it's still a really great way of getting in at, at those objects. So command click, and then I can just grab that back end of the tail and I can adjust and I can back out and select the item. This would have been a shift enter would have been a useful time saver there. And I can scale that now. And this still works, right? Command click inside, scale it out. You're good to go.
you're good to go. So that uh, that's that's it, folks. I hope that was a useful little tutorial. Learned a couple of things, maybe uh, some try things to try out, some stuff to get the creative juices flowing. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the other one. If you like this one, just uh, put a little comment in. Um, <laughs> more to help me remember to do more of these tutorials because uh, I've got one sit uh, there sitting with lots and lots of comments and I keep forgetting to take a look. So uh, by all means, uh, set a comment. And if you really want to, I got to do like all the other YouTubers do and say like and subscribe and all that nonsense. I'm not even sure I understand what those things do. But if you want to do those, hey, knock yourself out and make me happy as well. Thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you in the next one.